I'm pretty sure we've seen this before, have we not? Seen this before? Okay, I'm gonna turn off the TS for a little bit. Fuck, it's one of the guys, man. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off the TS for a little bit. Fuck, it's one of the guys, man. I'm, I'm gonna see ahead. I'm gonna see ahead of the text. The fuck? Is that what makes a black hole? It kinda looks like a mega hole. Chat. Wait, but did they actually see those things? Like, how did they know they exist or whatnot? What a thousand suns. Okay. Of course. Okay, dude. Wait, chat, is this actually real? Is this actually real? That means that all these things are crushed to a smaller scale and that makes the black hole and it's that big. Makes sense. Chat, chat, but with all those, um, chat, with how big it is, it swallowed, it, it, chat, it probably swallowed like a, a crazy amount of stuff, right? Would it be possible that one of them was a place that had people on it? Hey, Felix. Thank you so much for being you and making my day better every day. A lot of people look right to like me. I wouldn't know where I would what be. If, what if people, what if people grew up, UCL. you know, evolved, began full, full big brain, and this big fucking balls the first time when watching them getting stream sniped by the notorious banana on Fortnite. Right. Watching you a lot recently and you're truly inspiring and have helped a lot during quarantine. You and fam stay safe, buddy. This is it, man. Well, chat, if they were that five head, well, they would have seen it coming and they would have gotten out. So, they're probably not that intelligent because they would have defied bad RNG. Ah, sucks, dude. Sucks to be them. This video was sponsored by Caseta by Lutron. These are these good videos. I wonder if this is good or not, though. According to the general theory of relativity, 
Gravity is not a force. There are no gravitational fields. Gravity is, is it not it an illusion. And in this video, I will prove it to you by blasting off into outer space. In three, two, one. For real. Albert Einstein said the happiest thought of his life was imagining a man falling off the roof of a house. What uh, made Einstein so happy about this wasn't schadenfreude. It was the realization that this man, while he was falling, wouldn't feel his own weight. He would be weightless. And anything he dropped on his way down, well, it would remain stationary relative to him or moving in uniform motion. The whole situation would be just like if you were in deep space, not near any large masses, with your spaceship at right. rest or coasting along at constant velocity. What if he threw Here, something? You would feel no weight. Objects would remain stationary relative to you, or if you give them a push, they would move in a straight line at constant velocity. And you would be the very definition of an inertial observer. You're not accelerating, not in a gravitational field. All the laws of physics apply in your reference frame, meaning there is no experiment you could do to distinguish your inertial reference frame from any other. Now here comes the big leap. Einstein looks at these two scenarios and says, they are equivalent. Chat, not just chat. Is it kind of interesting though, chat that that we know all the laws and shit of like the physics, dude. It's kind of like data mining a new game, like f figuring out all the code and shit. Similar, physically they are. Well, exactly not all, the but you know, thing. like most of them. Which means man falling from roof is not in a gravitational field. There are no gravitational fields, and he is not accelerating. He is an inertial observer, just like Rocket Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, okay, I can see how both of these observers feel weightless. But man falling from roof is clearly in a gravitational field. I mean, he's right next to the Earth. And he's obviously accelerating. His speed is increasing by 9.8 meters per second every second, a fact that will become painfully apparent when he crashes into the ground. I know that these two situations look very different, but Einstein's equivalence principle tells us the one thing to focus on, the experience of the observer. If they feel weightless, then they are in an inertial frame of reference. Every bit as good as Rocket Man's out drifting through deep space. Imagine if Rocket Man, coasting along at constant velocity, I understand a couple of those words. paying attention, comes upon a planet a long way off in the distance. An external observer might notice that the path of the rocket bends ever so slightly towards the planet. But inside, Rocket Man would remain oblivious. He feels no force, experiences no acceleration. As the rocket gets closer to the planet, it goes faster and faster. But Rocket Man still feels weightless. For him, nothing has changed. So where on this journey would you say the frame of reference changes from inertial to non-inertial? An onboard accelerometer would never even register a blip. He has continued on his inertial path through space-time. So the logical conclusion is his frame of reference is inertial up until the instant he crashes into the planet. Wait, okay, that actually makes sense. So how do you explain the curved path of his rocket without gravitational forces or gravitational fields? The answer is curved space-time. First, focus on Rocket Man's observation that the whole time he felt like he was moving, moving with constant velocity, velocity in, in a, a straight, straight line. line. He was moving in a straight line through space-time. But space-time around I'm massive today, objects like planets is curved. So that's why his path appeared curved to a distant observer. Hmm. Now this isn't as unusual as it seems. Airplanes, for example, always try to fly the shortest route between cities. Essentially, they just go in a straight line. But since the Earth's surface is curved, the shortest path doesn't look like a straight line. These shortest paths over curved surfaces are called geodesics, and we use that same word, geodesics, for the straight line paths followed by ah, fake news, curved space-time. Here's another analogy. 
Imagine you and a friend are standing a thousand kilometers apart on the equator. Now you both set off due north. Over time, you will come closer together, ultimately bumping into each other at the North Pole. It's as though there was a force pushing you together, but you didn't feel a force and your friend didn't feel a force. Gravity is just like that force. It doesn't actually exist. The real reason for you coming together was that you were both on straight paths, geodesics, on a curved surface. Astronauts on the space station are weightless. That means they too are inertial observers traveling on a geodesic. But the Earth curves space-time around it, which is why their straight-line path appears as a helix. It only looks like a circular orbit if you forget the time dimension. Don't forget, we are all moving through space and time. Right! Space-time. No, it makes sense! This is the standard bent sheet analogy for curved space-time. But I think this demo is misleading. It allows you to fool yourself into thinking you understand general relativity when the intuition you're actually drawing on is just that objects like to fall towards the middle of a well due to the gravitational force. But in general relativity, there is no gravitational force. What you should be thinking about is objects traveling on a straight line path through space-time. It is interesting. So happens that space the time is actual point is dude, things to have shallow on them. So that straight line path Muscle doesn't bear. look like a straight line. Matter tells space time how to curve. Thanks so much, and space time on. tells matter how to move. Now let's go back to deep space. What happens if you turn on the rocket thrusters and accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared? Well, someone outside would see all objects remain stationary, while the floor of the rocket accelerates into them. Inside the rocket, everything would appear to accelerate down to the ground, and you would feel a force pushing up on your feet, the same force that's pushing up on you as you watch this video. This situation feels exactly the same as being at rest on the surface of Earth. Because we are at rest on the surface of Earth. Now I want to ask you, are you watching this video in an inertial frame of reference? Well, Wait, I mean, I'm you confused. You you, I think you just lost me. No. So you are not an inertial observer. Your situation is exactly the same as someone accelerating on a rocket ship in deep space. And let me be clear, I don't mean that being at rest in a gravitational field is like accelerating in a rocket. I mean it is oh, the exact same- Oh! Because we're not accelerating. We're just moving with the Earth at a crazy speed. But, it's not but if it did accelerate, we'd probably get crushed. Right? Same thing. You are accelerating and there is no gravitational field. Gravitational fields do not exist. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but come with me for a minute. No? I'm done now then. <laughs> this is you. In standard Newtonian physics, we draw your weight force, the force of gravity pushing you down, and the normal force from the floor pushing you up. We say these forces are equal and opposite, so there's no net force on you, so you are not accelerating. But in general relativity, gravity is not a force. You have no weight, so the only force on you are these normal forces pushing you up. So you are accelerating upwards. Then you're not idea. moving up. Relative to what? I mean, relative to the flip chart and the floor and basically everything in this room. But all of those things are in your frame of reference, which you know is not inertial. Relative to everything- I understand rocket, now. I'm not accelerating. What you need, if you really want to- Yeah, I get it. I get it. Is someone in an inertial- Yo, I get it now, chat. It's like, it's like uh, mathematics and physics, whatever, that have different rule sets on, on how you, uh, you gather the, like the starting data. Right? So you have to you have to use different things. So whenever you compare one to the other, it doesn't make sense. Because it's like, oh, yeah, I get it now. Frame it's just different rules. Like the guy who fell off the roof. And he would see you accelerating up at 9.8 meters per second squared. 
I think what this shows is that what an acceleration really is, is it's a deviation from a geodesic. You can't follow a straight line path through space time because the floor prevents you from doing that. It applies a force upwards on you, so you're accelerating up. But if I'm accelerating up, and so is everyone else around the world, and presumably the whole surface of the Earth, then shouldn't the Earth be expanding? No. It is possible for you to be accelerating okay, I'm done. I'm done. even though your spatial coordinates are not changing. I will show you one equation from general relativity. This says that the second derivative of your position with respect to time is equal to your acceleration. Okay, chat, I'm, I'm gonna go next chat. Uh, just add all the data you today. If you were in flat space time, well, this is exactly what you're saying. If you're accelerating, your spatial coordinates have to change. But you're not in flat space time. And this term is related to the curvature of space. Chat, I, I guess I'm stupid. I'm sorry, chat. You guys, listen. I'll be looking chat if you guys want to finish the video. Chat, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Okay, there you go. Okay, last link. What is this?